and welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. And this is the uh, the player ratings for um, Everton's 1-0 win over Fleetwood Town in the uh, second round of the Carabao Cup. Um, I did an instant match reaction just after the game, given my thoughts. Um, I was actually quite, you know, I was quite pleased, to be honest. Um, I, know, I know there'll be quite a lot of negativity going around about, you know, the fact that uh, we only won one nil against weak opposition, but you know I think we sh- we need to be used to this by now. We never really uh batter lower league teams in in cups and that, and um I'm just pleased we managed to keep a clean sheet and that the win never really looked in doubt. But uh, but yeah, um, but getting into like individual player performances, I mean, there's a lot of sixes in here. I'm gonna like just straight off the bat, especially in the defence, because um. It's 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 a hard one to judge. I think, especially defensively. Um, in fact, I in fact, I might as well say now every uh, the goalkeeper and the entirety of the defense have all been given sixes because, um, it because we kept a clean sheet, and yet they didn't really have too much to do. So it's and we were never really under the cosh. Um, I I actually kind of thought we were just in control all game. And I was never really worried that Fleetwood were gonna score. I might be alone in that, I'm not sure. Um, but that that was that was my thought. So but I mean, yeah, Begovic didn't have loads to do, made a few good saves when need when he needed to, but wasn't that busy. Um Patterson, obviously, uh, I, um, as in a more offensive on the more offensive side of things, actually got into some very good positions. Um and I think the Fleetwood defence struggled to pick him up. It's just that end product isn't quite there yet. Um, but I've been really impressed with him so far this season. Obviously, he started um every game for us. He was hooked quite early. I think in an ideal world, Lampard wouldn't have started him. Um, obviously, Coleman was at right centre back and then replaced him at right back once we reverted to um the four at the back system, which we looked a lot better in. Funny that. Um, but yeah, I, I thought we looked a lot better once. We reverted to that four at the back system, four two three one, four three three, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, um, st- back to Patterson. Um, yeah, I, 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 I gets in like get for, gets forward very well. Um, and I think he, I think he's like good at getting in the right positions, good on like dribbling wide and that. But yeah, I say I, he had a couple of shots on goal, didn't take them great. You know what I mean? And um. Can't remember him having too many crossing opportunities either. Maybe just didn't quite get into the positions for that. But uh, but yeah, like didn't put a foot wrong. So I think I think he earns his six. Similarly, Seamus Coleman, um, I thought really came into his own a lot more once he went back to that more familiar right back role. But you know, leading from the back, um, you know, obviously as as the club captain, of course, as you expect him to do, as he has done year in year out now, and uh, playing in an unfamiliar role. Um, could possibly actually consider himself quite unlucky not to be getting a seven, but um, yeah, I I I, I say I think a six for all the defense is fair. Um, Michael Keane, he he did look shaky at times, but you know if you get to, you get a clean sheet, unless you're like a really having an error prone game or whatever, I I think I think as a defender you deserve at least a six. Um, and similarly, Reese Welch as well. Um, who of course, you know, making his senior debut, um, obviously featured quite a bit in um in pre-season, but senior debut pretty much, and and was completely solid, you know. It, it, a sign of a good centre back performance wise is if you don't really notice them too much and you didn't notice Welch too much, which therefore I think means he played all right, because you usually notice defenders when they make mistakes. Um and yeah, I, I can't really remember him putting a foot wrong. And then Vinagra, kind of similar to Patterson, really, was getting into good positions. I think he had a few more crossing opportunities, which were okay. Uh, we'll get on. Uh, we'll get on to why they weren't so effective a bit later. I'm sure you can kind of guess why that may be. But um, I, I am quite impressed with what I've seen from Vinagra so far. He's got, I don't know, I, there's something about him that like, I, I think I think he's just a bit more intelligent going forwards than perhaps Mikhailenko is. Um, they didn't really too, get too much of a chance 
to see him defensively today, kind of to do with um, kind of down to how Fleet would uh, set up. But um, I, I I would be interested to see Benagra get a few more starts. I think, um, especially if we're gonna stick with this um five at the back system with wing backs, because I definitely think Benagra is more of a left wing back than Michalenko is. I think Michalenko is probably the best left back, like just like in a full back. Um, but if he's gonna be stationed a bit further forward, then I think Benagra will probably be the better option. I'm entirely sure. Um, leave leave your thoughts in the comments um, about what you think about that. But uh, moving into the midfield, Amadou and Anna, I'm going to give a seven. I think there will be people that disagree with me. I think, um, you know, I, I mean, especially first half, there were quite a few sloppy passes, I remember. But um, I thought it was a very solid screen. I think we kind of got a bit of a glimpse more than uh, in his other, like, substitute cameo appearances. Obviously, this is his first start. But, yeah, I think we got a bit more of a glimpse in what we can maybe ex- hope uh, to expect from Onana today. I thought he sat in front of the defence quite well. Um, good tackling at times. I think him and Awobi were actually a very effective partnership, uh, perhaps more than I maybe expected them they'd be. Um, and when he did get on the ball as well and kind of went on a bit of a run, he's a very strong runner, very quick. Um, and obviously, you know, he's, he's strong, big lad. Um, so he's, you know, he's hard to shake off the ball, although... Uh, Fleetwood kind of found a way to do that by kicking the living shit out of him. Um, I, I think of the likes of Richarlison and Pienaar all those years back who like used to get fouled like three or four times a game. Um, and I know I was right up there today. I don't know what it was up, what was up with him being targeted by the Fleetwood players, but my God, he seemed to get fouled every two minutes. It was ridiculous. Um, and that's kind of... Um, uh, it, it's flawed logic, I'm sure, but it's that has contributed to why I've given him a seven because um, he gave a full 90 as well, which uh, again, a lot of people were very unhappy with. Um, a lot of people were saying, uh, like, in, like the hour mark, get him off Lampard, pull him off because he's clearly still not at full fitness yet, you'd expect. Um, and like I say, getting kicked all the time, we, we don't want him injured. So, um, but yeah, I was impressed with Renan today. Definitely is. Um, Best performance for Everton so far, but um, next to him, by far, man of the match again, because he's man of the match every week at the moment for us. Awobi gets an eight, um, has to get an eight at least. Um, if he, like, you know, if there'd been more goals that he'd been involved in, he might even have got a nine, but um, j- just ran the show yet again. Um, once we, like I say, reverted to that full back and we had that extra man in midfield and Lewis Warrington. He was allowed to go further before, which I've always said would make him even better. And we didn't get to see that too much today, but he'd been playing so well before that it wasn't maybe too noticeable. But picking out passes, uh, his dribbling is superb, his control is superb. Um, he seems to be making all the right decisions now, whereas Stitton Lee used to make all the wrong ones. Um, got the assist, of course. Um very um very well worked goal that I thought actually very smartly taken. Um and like I say, picked out the right pass, uh Gray in space, and obviously he gets the easy finish. We'll get onto that uh from the grey side of things in a bit. But yeah, Awobi just my God. I mean, I think I say it every week, but we all owe him, or at least a, a large majority of the fan base owe him such a massive apology. It is just unreal. He is our best player every single week at the moment. Um it's just insane. I've never seen a player so transformed. And there's nothing too much you can really say about that other than that. It's just, yeah, I, if if he will be our player of the season this year, I'm almost certain of it. I think he'd have to get a major injury to not be. So, yeah, just I, I will be. I, I cannot I cannot say um cannot say a bad word about him. Absolutely brilliant. Um. But we're going to get into the bit of the the negative side of things here now. Uh, Dwight McNeil, I've given a five. Um, yeah, it's. I know it's early days, and I know we are a very reactive fan base. I know we're very quick to judge, but it's it's not looked good so far, has it? It's got to be said. Um, I don't know if he's in the wrong position. Obviously, I know he's not used to playing out on the right, cutting in, but. This something just doesn't seem quite right with him at the moment, does it? Um, Dwight McNeil, he, 
he does seem too slow off the mark. I think a lot of people have picked up on that. And uh, yeah, I was really kind of hoping tonight would be a kind of statement, almost like the Dynamo Kia friendly was, where you can say, yeah, I've arrived. Uh, this is what I can do. Um, and then hopefully we start to see that gradually come in more in Premier League matches. But sadly, it wasn't the case. And uh, yeah, it's... I'm not. I'm not going to write him off anywhere, anytime soon. But um, he does need to start showing more. It's got to be said, and hopefully, it's just a slow start. Um, I mean, kind of see the player that we paid, you know, fifteen million going on for twenty million for. Um, but yeah, we shall see. Um, but he was by no means the worst player on the pitch. That comfortably goes to Salomon Mondon. I'm giving him a three. Um, and that might seem quite harsh to some people, but I'm sorry. That's He's that's easily the worst performance anyone's put in so far this season by a distance. Um, and you know, you've got to try and justify you'd have to justify giving him a four or five. And I can't think of enough he's done to justify that. So against weaker opposition, you know, we saw it against Bourne Wood last season. It's like the only actual good game he's had for us against a non league side last season. You'd think, oh, against Fleetwood, he might actually be able to have a bit more of an impact. No. No, um, he's not doing the job that he's positioned at striker to do. He doesn't win headers, um, doesn't link up play, uh, doesn't get on the end of crosses. As I as I touched on earlier with Vanagra, uh, just ineffective, um, and a waste of a slot in the squad. Um, and that might seem harsh to some people, but it's Jesus Christ, we need a striker. We need a striker so badly. It is just ridiculous. Um, and it could not have been more obvious tonight um, if it wasn't obvious before. Yeah, just... I, I, I can't even say anything more about it. He, but yeah. A free for Salomon Rondon. And let's just move on. Um, to the final starter. Um, Damari Gray obviously wasn't meant to be starting. He, of course, um, only came in after Tom Davis picked up a training injury. Another injury in the warm-up. Ridiculous, don't know how it happens. Um, but uh, he actually ended up, you know, again, similar to Nottingham Forest, he's probably one of our most dangerous players. I've been on a Wobi. Um, and like I say, he got he got on the score sheet, uh, assisted by Wobi, like I say, took the goal really well, good finish. Um, he was I think he was better in the first half than he was in the second, and obviously again, you think fitness wise, like I say, he wasn't meant to be starting. Again, he got brought off quite early as well. Uh Lampard not wanting to risk him. Um, but I do still think there's, a, there's too much of an element of, of selfishness to him. I think he makes the wrong decisions a lot. And obviously, you know, the joke is that, oh, he's trying to recreate that goal against Arsenal, the last minute winner last season at Goodison. But yeah, it's don't get me wrong, he's he's our, he's our most um, effective attacker at the moment. But I think that just shows that that needs changing before. The window goes out. Obviously, Gordon didn't get on the pitch today, but Gray has shown more than him so far this season. So, I mean, he's scoring again, which is a positive. Obviously, like I said, that Arsenal goal was actually the last time he scored a goal for us. Um, that's actually no, sorry, um, in the league that is. I think he um he got one against Hull last season, didn't he, in the cup? But uh, but even so, that's still going back to January. So yeah, he's scoring again, which is good. But uh, yeah, let's. Going to be over being a bit overly critical. I've still given him a seven, but if we're being a bit overly critical, yeah, we 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 do need a bit more from him. And like I say, he needs to be a bit more of a team player. I'd say, um, and yeah, that basically wraps it up. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rate the subs, but I will say that Warrington in particular came on and looks very good. Uh, Tokoski was you know so, as solid as you'd expect. Like I say, Fleetwood didn't have too much attack into this, so it's kind of hard to, hard to judge the defenders. And then Stanley Mills was was quiet, um, didn't really have much impact on the game, but, you know, didn't do anything wrong. So uh, they'd probably all get sixes as well, to be honest. Um, I'd, I would be quite intrigued to see more of Lewis Warrington. I do think, you know, well, I think we're hoping to get rid of a few more midfielders. I I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Gomez and Allen um, both leave before the end of the window, if we can find them. Um, teams to take them on and uh, I think Lampard's made clear he doesn't want to loan out Warrington this season so he's obviously still starting for the under 21s but I think he should probably be considered more of an option 
the bench. I think he offers a bit more in that midfield. Always showing for the ball. Can kind of do that holding role like Onana. And I say any midfielder that just allow, allows Wobi, a Wobi to get forward more. You know, I keep banging on about it, but he is our most important player now. Um, and if you're going to build the team around anyone this season, build it around him. So that's that's where my mindset's at, especially when it comes to midfielders. So, um, but yeah, that basically sums it up. That video, um, uh, comment giving your thoughts, giving your ratings for uh, each of the players. Um, you know, I'm sure there'll be disagreements over there. There might be some who think I was too harsh on Rondon. There might be people who think I was too generous. Um, but uh, yeah, that that basically sums it up. Uh, please leave a like if you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe if you're new to the Topic Blues channel. Uh, for more Everton content and we will see you in the next video. Cheers.